Welcome to the Shooting Outdoors channel, proudly supported by FMG Gun Shop Dunchurch. Tonight on the table is the turn of the H&N Field Target Trophy Power in .22. These are the copper coated versions, so it's going to be the first time this channel's ever put sort of hybrid or hippie ammo up against its leaded counterpart. So I'm going to be really interested to find out what the outcome is, I know what the interest, I, well, I know what the outcome is, but you're going to be just as interested, I think, to find out the outcome especially when it gets to delivery because that's where it ultimately counts which is why I leave it till last to try and drag you through the, the rest of the, the video so let's just have a, a quick overview of these then so these are copper coated as you can see there you get a cheeky very cheeky 200 pieces in this tin which is 100 less than what you get with the 177s they're 14.66 grain now precision they reckon is very very good for these, so 5 bars on the old H&N tin, good for capping birds, not in the club but out in the field. Guessing that's plinking and possibly target shooting as well just underneath the bird, either that or that's what you're aiming at, it's just a sparrow sitting on top. Distance, now these are saying these can go out to some range, so maximum distance H&N recommend. Or, st or state claim we should say the .22 caliber for a 25 dual or under air gun that's the top of the tin on the back of the tin you can see there very very fine print you've got your typical label there for, for H&M with your CN and your barcode and your H&M sport and all the rest of it that CN the barcode actually is, is a bit of a H&M trademark I find if you've got that sort of format on the back of your tin the pellets that you've got are more than likely to come out of the H&N factory now I thought these were done by an umbrella company but I'm still not 100% sure on that I think H&N do actually have their own manufacturing facility but if you can see this top line here which is absolutely horrendous to read but it does say H&N field target trophy power it says 5.50 for the caliber and the next to it 200S which I'm guessing is 200 suckers <laughs> that's yeah it annoys me that that 200 but we'll get onto that later let's just let's just move on then because it, it it's a bit it's a bit childish to kind of get stuck into it so let's look inside the tin very very quickly then because there's not actually much going on inside here these are actually tin these are a ferrous material you can stick a magnet on them and they are magnetic well they're not magnetic but they will be magnetized to something magnetic inside then lots of ginger pellets very well coated um, hardly any that are not coated inside as we know from its leaded counterpart these are a thick wall thick wall pellet and they are very very tough lead as well so I, there, there's very little dingers for these gingers in here complete lack of a makeup pad which I think when you've got 200 in a tin now the traditional lead pellet tin is a bit taller and you do get a few more in there but for less than half a tin that, I haven't fired many of these and already you can hear them rattling around if they were in my pocket out in the field you will not get anywhere near a rabbit it would be gone because it would hear that coming now we have got something that we're working on behind the scenes to correct all this for, for people who carry these around 200 pieces in a tin like that just hang on to your makeup pads for any pellets tins that you do get out of and just pack them and jam full of that or put a makeup pad in there and kind of compact it out a little bit with a bit of toilet tissue on top because that for me that's just a joke I mean it's just a waste of packaging you might as well not bother even selling them right I'm getting emotional about it now now I didn't get these didn't pay for these pellets you do and that's where it kind of really niggles me it just plays on my OCD a little bit I don't know why but <laughs> there you go but yeah, as I said, in the tin, very, very clean tin. That that copper coating holds all of your debris, dust, and just keeps it all within inside the pellet. Yeah, very, very clean, which means that that's going to transfer down the downrange, so it should hopefully make things a lot more accurate. 
because aerodynamically they don't change as much I, you don't have as much turbulence whizzing around all the imperfections that you get with a, a lead coated pellet you know we wash them for certain accuracy personally i don't think you get much more out of them i think sorting them is going to be a better way to do it that's a complete haul of the episode and i'm getting sidetracked so looking then at the actual drawing as you know i strip all these back now now this 5.53 was a little bit of an error on the software that i've used to actually draw it <sighs> I actually get a much more accurate measurement than that and it was like 5.527 and when I've gone and put that into the CAD it's jumped it up because I haven't used three decimal places so this was one of the larger ones one of the 5.52s as we'll say I should have noticed that but I didn't when I printed it all out and I looked at it and I checked the 32 piece sample you won't actually find one in there I thought ah great but well, I'm not redoing everything because people now watch me at work <laughs> so let's let's quickly then have a quick overview so you can see that this is almost identical to what the lead counterpart is let's not dwell too much on that it is going to be slightly overinflated with a copper coating it's going to have a harder shell this that and the other we know about the design we covered that in a lot of detail in the the traditional lead pellet video the, the field target trophies Let's just look at the means then for these, these pellets. So your total height then is 6.6 mil, so it's quite a stubby little pellet. Your head bore is 5.51. Now that's 0.01 of a millimetre more than what they advertise on the back of the tin. Your skirt length then is 2.66. Again, it's got quite a shallow skirt on it. It tends to focus a lot more on the head, the H&N field target trophy, I find which makes it a bit more sort of heavy nosed but they are quite balanced because of that thick skirt and the way that the cone digs straight down into it comes right past the split line on the head then you you know it kind of rebalances itself a bit better and all that extra weight at the back actually tends to help keep it a little bit straighter down range or it did on the leaded ones anyway the traditional lead ones and then we've got a weight which is 14.96 now that is a massive jump up i mean that's that's a long way off what they actually advertise on the tin so if you're a bit of a chair gun fanatic this is where this this mean data comes into it because off the sample you might be able to just work that a little bit better to work out your coefficients and where your weight it actually is on your pellet and that may make the difference between a, a steep trajectory and a bit more as it actually is quickly moving on to the spreads then so going back to total height again 0.09 spread on the height so these are the, you know 0.03 there for the head bore so quite a, a small variation between everything there's not much the only place it does jump up is in these last two areas here the skirt length and then the weight suggesting that you know balance is, is going to be a little bit of a, of a problem on these pellets but overall though it scores a, a 0.63 which is sort of middle of the class really it's nothing to shout about it's certainly not as good as the leaded counterparts which suggests to me that actually this copper coating business has more of an effect on the overall dimensions of the pellet than than you first may anticipate you may just think oh, it's copper coating it's just going to wrap around it so it is it's going to be the same thickness all the way around this is sort of suggesting that perhaps it isn't so cost has got to be probably my biggest bugbear with these pellets and it's it's, it's just got to be said really hasn't it so Let's, let's go and look at it, we're going to look at it from purchase price and then what it will cost you for 500 as we do with all sort of half pot pellets. Starting with FMJ then, they came out at £6.99, so not the ex most expensive out of the three samples. JSRamsbottom.co.uk, they came out at £5.69, Shooting Scuba at £7.49 which gives us a mean cost per tin of £6.72 so nudging £7 a tin for 200 so what does that equate to if you were to compare it against the, the field target trophy price the, the traditional leaded pellet price where you get 500 in a tin so if we take our 200 pellets we times it by 5 so £7.72 £6 times that by 5 divide that by 2 and we end up with £16.80 per 500 pellets. 
just just mull over that for a brief second while I turn around to you and say if you were to buy the leaded counterparts, the traditional leaded pellet, you'll be paying nine ninety nine at most for a tin of five hundred. I think the average on them was sort of like nine pounds seventy five area, but we'll say a ten or a tin, as opposed to an excess of fifteen pounds. Moving on. So looking at deformation, which I think is going to be quite interesting on these pellets. I think these are coming out the barrel slow, i.e. underpowered. Why do I think this? The actual impact itself, the penetration was really low. It actually struggled to get past the cardboard and it went in sideways or it was found in the material sideways and it not really broke through the cardboard it actually tore a lot of card took it with it but it seemed to have lost all its energy on the actual cardboard or the shell as we would call it the, the skull is what we're trying to simulate so let's start at the other end of the barrel on the breech side so we've, we've fed our pellet in we have fired it down the rifle so we've got a blast of air coming into the back of the pellet that's deformed as expected really for a thick dense lead. I think the rifling marks and the ceiling ultimately comes more from it having a wider skirt or a wider diameter skirt than head. So the head doesn't actually seem to do that that much. Now when you get down to the choke that's when the head starts to get rifling marks and pick them all up. Now on the head itself it's not actually got a full circumference of rifling marks dug into the the pellet so I'm he also noticed that it's sort of buried over to one side if you know what I mean like the old military beret or French beret ha -he -ha. and there's very little deform I mean the head has compacted a little bit but not that much but the, the whole distortion thing is a little bit concerning so I thought maybe it's, it's hit the, the shell on an angle it's deformed it's twisted it's pulled in looked at the pictures again possibly but I think ultimately what's happening because of the lack of rifling marks it's gone down the barrel it's hit the choke and it's twisted as it's hit the choke it seems to me when I look at the delivery my point of aim on there is the M I zero the rifle the, the RM8 at 25 yards with a 16 grain pellet now these are 15 grain pellet but I expect it to be sort of around the M slightly higher when we look at the delivery or when we go into that stage just note where the groups are they're actually an inch lower and they get about half inch lower every target set that I shoot after that this suggests to me that the more you fire this copper pellet down your barrel it almost seems to have less an effect on the choke it is it making the choke more slippy is it I'm not quite sure what's going on but you'll see what I mean so I think what's happening is it's getting to the choke something's happening there because we've not got full rifle marks we're actually twisting or deforming the pellet in the choke but also while it's doing that you're getting a slight leak of air which is causing you to send the pellet out at a lower velocity hence why you're getting lower groups and I think the more copper you put down this the more of an effect that seems to have although the groups do seem to start tightening up we seem to still start coming out with lower and lower power as we go but other than that it didn't really deform at all and I think deformation really we can't do any we can't say anything definite other than it's probably not right the way it's coming out the barrel so let's quickly look at the delivery in some detail then so we've got our usual five groups here they didn't really like the Walther and they didn't like the Remington and I've never really known a single pellet not like one of them two barrels this is the first so the lead and in group we get a 32 millimeter group it's not actually too bad to be fair to it it's it's not under an inch is it let's face it at 25 yards indoor i would expect all pcp to be able to shoot a 25 inch group but it's not managed it on this occasion moving into the first of the 10 shot groups the actual ones that we measure 51 mil well you can see we've got a high flyer we've got a low flyer everything's generally in a column by the time we go into group two everything's starting to spread out and get flatter it's almost like i've turned the rifle on the side really and and shot it that way 
on the third group, group three, we scored a 33 millimeters, and everything is pretty much localized in the same areas where it was in group two. Sort of suggesting to me that as the rifle sort of settled down into it, they've. Uh, the, it, I think it's just took a bit more time to let in generally, and I dare say that I should be maybe it's going 32, 40, 33, but I have to go on the same way I would I work with every other pellet. But either way, the means come out at 41.3. Uh, what would that be? You're probably looking at about 37 or something if you were to, to get rid of that 51 and swap it for the 32. But either way, I mean, like I said, there's not one of them that's under an inch at 25 yards. Let's switch out then to the 40 yard target. So, yeah, 40 yards, 53 millimeters, five shots. Yeah, I'm just going to carry it straight on there to the actual scores, I think. So where do these actually score them? So where do these fit in in the big picture of the table? As you can see, no surprise, and they've dropped straight down to the bottom with a 24. So let's have a look at where it all goes wrong for these things. So they score okay in quality. They've got a pretty mediocre quality score there at 0.63. Still not as good as what the you know the, the lead traditional lead pellet was at 0.58 still a bit of work to do and that's going to be down to because that's a dimensional thing that's the copper coat and have an effect on it simple as that but the cost is is where these things kind of buff themselves up a bit and give themselves a little bit of a score because they do score cheap and they do score a four because you know they're less than seven pound fifty However, when you times that £7.50 by 200, this time it does hit it. They don't get away because I think the last tin was 300, so it's managed to scrape itself a, a, a 3, whereas this time it doesn't. It scores itself a 2. So 2 times 4, we've got 8. When we times that 8 then by the quality score, so it just drops it out. So you've got your 8 times your 3 gives you a 24 and he times that whole thing by one again because delivery is so poor it's, it's greater than 20 it's a one so we're times in everything on that by one again which is just simply a 24 so this pretty much wraps up then the, the field target trophy powers the copper coated ging pellets we do need to go full copper based on what i've seen so far i'm going to need a3 paper as always, feel free to comment, don't troll. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to the channel, get 10 notifications on because we do these quite, quite regularly. We're aiming to get these out every two weeks. I can't always do it though, just because of family commitments, etc. Stay safe, shoot straight, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching, goodbye.